Yeah, I mean, I I think when it comes to diversifying your revenue streams, it it can be tempting to say, let's go and launch a bunch of different products to new audiences, but you got to understand you're introducing some pretty significant unknowns uh, and it might work and it might not. So if you're going to look to diversify your revenue streams, which I do believe is a good idea, asking yourself, how can we sell more to the people we're already serving is where I would start. And, and so that is now, again, if you figure people have less that, you know, you may reach the bottom of that well, but that is definitely where you know, where I would start. And I know for us, we, we pivoted from frankly, selling things that might've been more of a, a group type activity to more of a one-on-one -on -one service based thing. Cause people want results now they want it sooner rather than later. Um, we've, we've shifted from trying to do everything ourselves to saying, let's in, you know, enter into and engage in more affiliate uh, type opportunities so that we can sell somebody else's thing without having to create it. So I would just say, start with the people you're already serving. If you go out there and say, get panicky and try to launch something totally new to a totally new market, it, it better work. If it doesn't, you could be way worse off than when you began. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Business Launch. I am one of your hosts, Roland Frazier, and my cohort counterpart and business partner, Ryan Dice, is your other host. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Um, your co cohort? <laughs> yeah, counterpart? everything. Cohort. You all can be a things. cohort. Uh, all the things. Yeah. Yeah. All the I, all the all the C's. Cohort. Cohort. I feel like I feel like I got a promotion. I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm very excited about it. No, I'm I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Except I will tell you, um, I have seen across our portfolio of businesses, and pretty much everybody I talk to says business is down. And um, have you? heard that out in the world as well yeah yeah i mean in talking to clients portfolio companies everybody seems or, or if it is up it's taking it's requiring like a herculean effort or they're doing they're doing some really new you know new things um but it's it's not one of those deals where oh we just got to show up this year and just by nature of being here we were 10 20 percent higher like it, it's now required, like, what, 20, 21 and 22 and maybe even 23 was right. I mean, it was just kind of up and to the right. It was like panicky there at the beginning of 20, yeah. but then it just kind of went crazy good across all of the different things. Even the physical businesses that were having trouble, like adapted and everything, probably because there was a lot of money being thrown into the, into the world and interest rates were, you know, money was free to borrow and it was also free to get for free to not have to pay back. And it was forced innovation, everybody and everybody was seeing what everybody else was doing. And so, um, yeah, I, I think I, I think we look back on 2020, obviously being a really difficult year, but 2021, 2022, and, and to, to your point, um, 2023, I, I, I think most of us, a lot of us kind of started to sense a slowdown, but, but in 2023, consumer sentiment always lags reality. And so yeah. they were still fully lagging. Uh, and I think where we are right now is, you know, it's funny, things I, I believe are improving. I think there's a lot of uncertainty around the election and, you know, you got seasonal slowdowns, which, which we talked about in previous episodes um, in a lot of businesses in the summer. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a grind right now across the board. I don't, I don't really know anybody who's saying like, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, 20, it's PK, crushing it. So if anybody. you, uh, if you're experiencing this, you are not alone. The question is, what can we do about it? Um, and just to kind of help you guys, uh, we did a little bit of research and the things that indicate recessions are all pointing that way right now. We, we've been kind of amazed at how long it took for this to happen because it was, uh, it, it was just like, you know, these are like, when this happens, this happens, but yeah. none of that was going on. It's like all the bad things are happening housing prices are going up and, uh, you know, and uh, inflation and interest rates and all of these things are happening. And yet sales were continuing to break records every single month. And that just, we were like, how, what, you know, can't. When is the shoe going to drop? Yeah. Much, much like the, uh, much like the, uh, the prime loan situation back in the, in the day and also the crypto world, right? It can't possibly yeah. no. the new reality is always profit. But, um, but sadly that's not true, but here's the deal. A few things, the U S treasury yield curve uh, is inverted and has been for some time. So they say that is a historically 
uh, predictable uh, predictor, excuse me, reliable predictor of inflation. GDP is down, um, gross domestic product. Inflation is high, as we all know and experience. Monetary policy is tightened because they've increased these interest rates trying to tame inflation. And we have all kinds of geopolitical risks, um, including supply chain disruptions, the Ukraine, Russia, uh, military operations slash war, depending on where you live, what you can say, and, um, and so on and so forth. And so um, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, most of the major economists and business leaders are all saying, you know, hey, it's, uh, it's finally here. And so the question is, what can you do to prepare, assuming that it hasn't really hit for you? Because it's very likely that it will get a lot worse. Let's all hope that it's not. I'm very optimistic in life. And so I'm going to hope for the best. But I think planning for less than optimal is, is a good way to go. And so um, I'm going to run through a couple things and, um, and then just kind of bounce back and forth with Ryan on these. But um, some of the proactive steps that businesses can take to prepare, one is build cash reserves. Um, the historical ideal is somewhere between three and six months of operating expenses. You and I talked about it, I think, on the last episode yep. that we like the idea of one. Well, I'll let you say it. Yeah, it was the it was, one, two, three method, I think, was was what we came up with. You came up with a cool name for it. I had not thought about that. But yeah, I mean, it, it's basically you want one month operating in in, in your operating account and then um, probably, you know, two to three months in, in, uh, in actual savings, um, was, was kind of where, where we landed. I like it. So, um, so building cash reserves, that's something that if you haven't done, definitely do that because I can tell you from our own experience, having, uh, having cash reserves allowed us to get out just to retire our credit facility, for example, that yeah. was not, you know, and that, that, that allowed us to save interest and also this ridiculous cycle that it was, credit, but it wasn't really credit when they finally got around to saying, we actually just want you to take the full amount of the credit line and have that in our bank. And then we will lend your money back to you at an interest rate <laughs> that, that, that we're totally secured on. And I was thinking, man, you, you know what, Brian, if we could get into that business, right. that's it's loan great. people their own money back to them in, at interest. Sometimes the second one money. is diversify your revenue stream. So don't rely on a single product or market. And that's an important thing to think about, um, thinking about what are the new opportunities. And I think it's important because the new opportunities are likely, like you've got your core thing, but there's always somebody chasing you. There's always somebody that wants your business, that's innovating better than you are, faster than you are, that's exploring new markets, that's thinking about how can I eat away at what you've got. And so I think it makes sense to always be vigilant and assume that somebody's coming for you because they are. So um, diversifying your revenue streams makes sense for that. Um, how have we done that in some of our portfolio companies? Ryan, you want to share a little bit of that? I think it's it, it, people might think about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when it comes to diversifying your revenue streams, it, it can be tempting to say, let's go and launch a bunch of different products to new audiences, but you got to understand you're introducing some pretty significant unknowns uh, and it might work and it might not. So if you're going to look to diversify your revenue streams, which I do believe is a good idea, asking yourself, how can we sell more to the people we're already serving is where I would start. And, and so that is now, again, if you figure people have less that, you know, you may reach the bottom of that well, but that is definitely where you know, where I would start. And I know for us, we, we pivoted from frankly, selling things that might've been more of a, a group type activity to more of a one-on-one -on -one service based thing. Cause people want results now they want it sooner rather than later. Um, we've, we've shifted from trying to do everything ourselves to saying, let's in, you know, enter into and engage in more affiliate uh, type opportunities so that we can sell somebody else's thing without having to create it. So I would just say, start with the people you're already serving. If you go out there and say, get panicky and try to launch something totally new to a totally new market, it, it better work. If it doesn't, you could be way worse off than when you began. Yeah. And, and one thing that, that we did in one of our businesses was that you, you were talking to one of the sales directors about was um, that we had too many products coming out and that was, they were all related to, they were all related and they sold well actually too to the audience that we had. So it was very difficult to stop doing it because you want to serve your audience. Um, and if you've got 
a good long string of products in the hopper, it's very nice to get them out there and see the revenue. But in terms of an actual sales force being able to deal with that, that was becoming kind of confusing for them. So that's a risk too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Complicate your sales process. Um, it, it just, it slows everything down. Another one is reducing your debt, uh, lowering your interest payments and freeing up your cash flow for other needs. Um, it's a tough time to think about reducing debt, but I will tell you the thing that I mentioned about retiring our credit facility, it was the right move because it really wasn't serving us. And we were, you know, we were losing that money and we weren't really because it was in a savings account. And at the time savings was, you know, it was paying what less than 1% interest. Yeah. So it didn't really make sense. And what was, weren't we at like 8% or something like that on that money? It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, it was six point something, but yeah, it was bad. It was, it was yeah, bad so, for as low as interest rates were at the time. And that would only be worse now. So if like, if you've got cash that you've got, this would be a kind of a thing to think about. If you've got cash reserves in excess of three months, I would definitely look at taking that extra three or more months cash reserve you've got and pay down debt to free up the interest rate and lose your dependency on that. I would try to keep, ideally, if you've got a credit facility, keep the untapped portion of it available so you have that to access as well. But it would be, I think, fis a good fiscally responsible decision to say, I'm going to shift some of my cash reserve that's low interest earning over to reduce debt that's obligatory and high and and high interest cost and still have and still have an adequate reserve to cover you know the one two three that we talked about. <laughs>